Hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me, Crafty Scrapper, here on YouTube and Instagram. Today I wanted to show you a few things that I am adding to the pages that I showed in my last video. This is my, um, what did I decide to call this journal? This is my coffee dyed speckled journal series. So in my first video for this journal, um, I was showing you how to manipulate the coffee dyed papers and add some more character to them. That was uh, part one. This is part two. I am showing you how I'm going to put it together and how I'm going to uh, put my covers and my spine onto this and it's just going to be the one signature. These um, interior pages are just um, half half pages. So eight and a half by eleven paper folded in half. That's all these are. That's the measurements on those. And I'll go through that signature in just a minute after we do this. This is some um, just some decorating die cut stuff that I want to add to the front of this signature once I get it bound into the covers. Here are my covers. It's going to be front and back. That's going to be the inside. And then this is going to be an exterior spine that's going to go on the front of the cover like this. And on the back, of course, too. So we're going to have this in, uh, exterior spine. Then we're going to have an interior spine that's going to go here. And this is what I'm going to sew the signature into is that um, interior spine. And it's going to get um, adhered to that exterior spine. So we're going to have a journal with a hidden spine. So that's what all of that was getting to. And I'm going to go through that and show you how I do that today. Um, I have measurements, like I said, on the um, signature part or the booklet, it is just half pages. So eight and a half by 11 paper and it's turned sideways, um, you know, and folded in half. Okay. The interior spine is one inch wide by eight and five eighths tall. My covers are five and five eighths wide by eight and five eighths tall. So that's both front and back cover. And then the exterior spine is three and one fourth inch wide by eight and five eighths inch tall. And then I went ahead and scored it just because, and I'll show you here on my scoreboard how I scored that. I went ahead and done that just because it's a little time consuming and I got it out of the way. But then I realized you really need to know how I scored this if you want to make this yourself. So we have a three and one fourth inch wide exterior spine. And what I did was I scored at one and then one and a half, two and then two and a half. Okay. So when you flip it over, it's kind of hard to see on that side because it's so um, uh, dark decorated. So on the back side, or this is going to actually be the side that shows, you've got one, two, three, four, five score lines. And I will show you why I went ahead and scored that. For one, I want the spine to curve and not just fold in the middle. So I want it to curve around the covers. So another reason why I went ahead and done these is because I like the texture of it and I want it to show a little on the covers. So it's going to help me with measurement too. So I'm going to find that second um, score line. So there's one, there's two. The covers are going to go onto this spine where you can see that second score line. So if they'll be like that, right at the second score line, 
is where that's going to fold, kind of fold over and start to curve over is at that second score line. So we're going to put both covers, adhere them to that exterior spine at the second score line. And y'all might be seeing the top of my head through this video because those score lines are so hard for me to see because of that decorated, that pattern paper. Y'all might see the top of my old head on this video. Anyway, we're going to adhere like this, get them even. We're going to adhere like that. Then we're going to make sure all of our pages are lined up in our um, signature the way we want them. And I have a little surprise in the middle of the signature. I'll show you in just a minute. And then I'm going to adhere this pattern paper onto that thin piece of chipboard. That's what that is, a piece of chipboard. And we're going to adhere that onto that. Not that you'll be able to see that a lot when you open up the book, but I didn't want just that showing if you did perhaps see it. So we're going to cover that spine like that. Then we're going to adhere this, sew this into that spine, and then this spine is going to get glued into the book that way. Okay, so that's what we are going to be working on today. First off, let's go ahead and adhere this. We are going to use some 5 8 inch score tape. And then we're going to use some Barely Art Precision Glue on top of that. So I'm going to go all the way to the edge. And then I have some 1 4 inch um, score tape that I'm going to go beside that with. Let me find it here. Okay, and then right beside that, we're going to put fourth inch. Okay, and then we're going to take off our backs. Okay, and we're going to use some Barely Arts because I want this good and adhered. I don't want this coming off. That's also when you put some liquid glue down where your score tape is, it kind of gives you some wiggle room too. to get that set in place how you need it before it just completely takes it over and doesn't let you move it at all. I've got some ooze. I'm going to get out my paper towel I had helping me dab ink a while ago. And I had already inked around the edges of that pattern paper and my covers. Uh, I have not inked around my exterior spine, so let's go ahead and do that. I am inking all of these with frayed burlap. Let's get that. And then I'm going to also go over my score lines with this too, just to give it that aged look all the way around. Okay, let's see, let's do those score lines lightly. Go to the next one. 
next. Next. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Junk journals are not meant to be perfect or look perfect. They're supposed to look very distressed. All right. So there is my exterior spine inked. And now let's go ahead and attach our covers on to here. And here we go. You're going to get to see my head probably. I'm going to get this score tape just as close as possible to that second score line, but still staying on the outside of the score line. So there's one, two. I did pretty good without not getting right into the camera shot. Right outside. And that and then I'm going to use scissors just to get it straight here there we go and I'm going to come over to this other side and do the same thing uh, hmm. I just realized that my score lines are not even that's okay I'm going to put more of the spine on the front than the back. You're not going to see the back as much. All right, so what I just did was the back, and then I'm going to come over. Is that still going to give me an inch for my interior spine? No, let's see. That cover is going to be there, and then there. Yes, that's still going to give me my one inch, so that's right. All right, so this one I'm going to come over to that second score line. Dunt, dunt right there, and then all the way, there we go. Now, if um, you can't handle that, it's going to be more covering the front cover than the back. Of course, you fix your score lines how you need to, but I wanted more on the front anyways. I just don't know why I didn't. doesn't matter. It's still going to be pretty. Like I said, uh, junk journals do not have to be perfect. All right, so we're going to do the same thing and go right outside of these and put a quarter inch score tape. And put it, take it all the way to the edge so it's going to stick really well. Better move these before I tear them. Getting the score tape off and go in the middle of that one put some more there and then this one's just going to need the one at the very edge there and there okay and now I'll take let's see let's do this first There we go. Now, let's take our backs off. I'm just going to take it off of one side and put on that cover. And then I'll take off the other side. So, this is the front. So, this is the back. Make sure our damask pattern is the same way. And it's got text on the back of it. This was just some scrap paper. That I had just some 
well I say scrap paper scrap paper is when it's not a whole piece this was some paper in my stash okay turn that down um, and I cannot remember what um, collection it was from it's been so many years back but I do I don't remember the brand but I do remember that the collection name was called lost and found I'm wanting to say that's Kaiser craft but I'm not sure but anyway it's something that um, you can't get anymore so okay now I just wanted to do this first journal and um, do it with paper that I already had in my stash without buying some before I bought that and then messed up a journal and messed up paper and all that so I wanted to try to do it with paper I already had so I'm trying to lean this up just a little bit so I know exactly where that goes. Okay. So I'm going to kind of sit it in that crook that I made. And then put it down. There we go. Okay, get my bone folder. And that's a little high, but it's going to be fine. Okay, and then we are leaning over. Yep, I like that. Okay, now let's take off the backs here. Our, our covers put on Got the glue on my bone folder it's pulling out all the excess on the end good get all that excess out okay now there are my covers. Let's see what it looks like. Folded. I love that. There's my spine there. Okay, so there is my cover. And it is going to house. I'll take my binder clip off just for a minute. This signature in there. We're going to get this signature sewn into this interior spine. Let's take that out. Okay. Now, here's some of our pages that we did in our last video. Some vellum, some different colored cardstock, some printables, and all of these were coffee stained, and then, well, most of these pages were coffee stained, and then they were um, ink splattered and distressed. 
this one turned out very well. If you watched my last video, this one was one that I was not happy with at all because it was too yellow. So after this dried, this was this is a die cut with um, glue and some, it's that art glitter glue, liquid glue, and um, some of that um, splatter spritz paint and I uh, mix the glue and that paint together and that caused this part here well it was very 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 yellow it still looks quite yellow <laughs> on camera but it's, it's more golden in real light than it is on the um, camera but then I got that frayed burlap after this all dried and went around it and it's kind of like a wax seal look to it with that um, ink spread all around on the edges so that turned out really like I liked it I wanted it so I'm going through here and making sure these pages are lining up how I want them to line up and that one was a little bit tall and then here is a little envelope that I'm going to put in the inside and it's going to be sewn into the spine there on the one fold and then it will still be able to fold together but it's going to be attached just in that middle hole it'll be attached so I need a long clip and the longest clip I have is clipped to this so y'all get to look at planner girl for just a minute while it holds that pocket in place and then I'm going to come down here and clip binder clip binder clip and binder clip over here too I just love that spotted coffee dyed paper binder clip there all right and that pocket is still moving so i don't need that i'm gonna have to clip it out here too let's see there's another binder clip here we go all right let's get that lined up there we go and binder clip this hey 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 how are we going to do that because i want it in the middle i don't want it high so it needs to come down some and then binder it there i've got some stacks of scrap paper that had some printables that didn't print right back behind my foam platform and now we are going to get where we want our I'll scoot that up so you guys can see I'm trying to scoot it close to me so I can see <laughs> but I would rather you see so let's find middle all right so we are eight and a half four and a quarter a little bit all right I'm going to make a bigger there we go and then let's go one two three okay and then one two three there we go and I just threw my interior spine in the floor almost hit the garbage can 
Okay. Now let's get our holes poked and we're going to bend the book up. Poke our first hole after I get that envelope where it needs to be. There we go. It's all the way through. And then all the way through. And all the way through. Okay. So that is done. Put my top on that. I don't need that right now. And like I said in the last you know, video before last, I don't have any of the wax um, thread. I might go with this baker's twine that's got that gold flick in it that's very pretty and it's thicker than this and my signature is quite thick so I think I might need a little bit thicker of a piece of thread So let's just go with this and see what it, how it turns out. All right, now I have to put holes in this also. So I'm going to put my lines across where my holes need to go on my spine, make my mark, okay, and then I've got to go to the center of that, okay, and then half an inch is going to be center, Because this is a one inch piece, so I gotta get my all back. Get on that line there. And then there's one. There's two. And three. Make sure it went, yep, I went all the way through. Okay. Put this back up again. All right, now it's going to get a little bit tricky just because. I'm not sewing the signature directly into the cover. I'm sewing it into this first. So I've got my baker's twine and this has numbers on it so I want to make sure that it's the right way it is. Alright, so I'm going to it together and go through. It's going to take me a little bit of 
oomph to get it all the way through there. There we go. All right, and then this part has to go in to this middle. Okay, and that's going to butt up to that in just a minute. I'm going to go through the back side of this interior, sp interior spine and then through the top. Make sure I come through all the way. I'm going to use my foam board to help me get that all the way through here. There we go. Okay, you see, there's that interior spine that I'm sewing on here. I'm going to have to pull a little harder to get it flush. Okay, then I'm going to go all the way and then back up. Okay, so all the way down, pull my book up some, through and then through this last hole on that interior spine and then I'm turning over and working that all the way through. There we go. And then the toughest part yet probably will be going back through that middle hole. I'll move this over some. I see it. It's coming. All right, I'm going to use my foam board behind me to help. There we go. Okay. Now, got to get everything tight. There's that good. And that good. Yep, tight, tight. I like that. All right, so we've got that middle, and then we've got a string. I'm going to pull over on this side and make sure we've got one on either side of that. And then, before I cut it off, I'm going to. Pull tight, and then I will trim this off. Pull tight again, and one more knot. There we go. Okay. Take my binder clips off and make sure everything looks correct before I trim off my ends. Okay, so this is going to fold over on itself here. And we'll do better after I trim off those tails. And then you've got your interior spine sitting like that. Okay, it looks good. Looks like I want it, so I'm going to just tie a bow here just in case I need to tighten up some things and undo those knots. I don't think I will because once I get this glued in to the cover, then that thread is not going to go anywhere. Good there. Good. 
Yep, I think it's just that envelope that it's kind of giving on. Just because the envelope is only attached in the middle. All right, so we can move all of this out of the way and get our cover. And see, we're going to glue that right down in that little crevice. Yep, that is going to work. Good, good, good. Um, on the inside of these covers, I'm going to uh, put some secretarial pockets, and I'll do that in the next video. But they won't. The pockets won't go straight across. They're going to kind of start at one corner, and I might even wave them and go up and attach just on the sides here, and it'll have you know tuck places on both. And that's how I'm going to do that. All right, so in this, I'm going to put score tape and barely art. We're going to go just barely onto that front cover, and we're not going to go flush to the bottom and I'm going to take that backing off and put another piece right beside it and overlapping a little bit okay there's that just barely on the front and back cover and not all the way to the bottom. Okay, there's that. And take the backing off. I'm going to do my bone folder right there for a minute. Looked like it was trying to come up. Okay, so we make sure that we're on the top where we need to be. And we're gonna put Barely Art glue at the tip tops and then kind of zigzag it down the middle. Okay, and then we are going to press this interior spine into the exterior. and get it flush that works yes all right and then we are going to use our bone folder down the edges and it's scraping out that glue at the bottom barely art that we put on both bottom edges then we're going to burnish on this side and really press that down really really good okay get all of our liquid glue out of the way all right and then we are going to fold Okay, so you actually have enough room, you would have had enough room if I wanted to do it, enough room to add a second signature, but I didn't want to um, fill it up that much because we're going to have pockets and um, then we're going to decorate these pages and it's going to get even fatter, so I didn't want to do that. Um, I do see a problem. We're already, we're already bursting at a seam here. I'm going to, I will put some type of decoration on that. You can see it right there. I will put some kind of decoration on that to, um, cover that up. And we will also put a little barely art down in there. 
and fold that over a little bit. I mean, that's just what you're going to get when you use pattern paper cardstock. Thin, this is thin cardstock, but still, it's just what you're going to get whenever you're making your cover and one of your spines out of that. And see, that probably happened when I was, see it's doing it there too. It probably happened when I used that bone folder. I went just a little too rough on the edges, but I will decorate that. Put a few decorations on my spine to cover all of that up. So, won't be a problem. I will be fine with it. Okay, and what we are going to do is wrap this up just so that that spine stays, but that's how it looks up top. Press those edges in good. And then we're going to open up. I'm going to put my paper towel back here so it doesn't um, get everywhere. That glue that I just put on the spine. I put a paper towel back here so when I open it up. So we're opening up and we'll have secretarial pockets here so you can see that spine. So I'm glad I covered it. And we are going to put this on the front of our signature. But I want to go through the signature real quick with you. There's some, we did um, speckle stamping there. We did some watercolor on that one, that coffee stain paper. We ripped this coffee stain paper and um, burned the edges with some of that ink. Got some vellum and some card stock that has library cards on it. A postcard printable. That's some more of the coffee paper that we um, manipulated and give some character to in our last video. And then there's some more coffee stained. And while it was still wet, I sprinkled some ink on. And that's why it has that kind of blurred, uh, bled effect. And I ripped the edges and gave it some distressing. There's some more cardstock just from my stash. That's the one that we did um, in the last video that just had that scroll effect around the edges and I did some speckle stamping there. There's another postcard printable and then we put that little um, collage of die cuts there on the edge of that. And that's some of the our coffee ring um, that I just used that glue dot interior with some Tim Holtz ink, <clears throat> excuse me, and made some coffee rings and little coffee splatters with other ink refills. And then that's some of our spritz that we just kind of tapped on. Another piece of um, cardstock from a six by six paper pad. It's just white on the inside. And then there's some more vellum that I ripped on the edges. And I've already went over that with you, that effect. And it is a little tacky, but it's not something that's going to, you can just tell it's got glue there and that's why it's that tacky like that. And that's some coffee dyed paper that I added some extra drops of coffee after it had dried a couple of times. And that's why it's got that effect, a little bit more coffee stain on it and I thought I loved how it looked against that ledger paper that's a printable and then kind of burnt looking and then having that little pocket on the inside there and then these are all the back sides of those same papers and the vellum and then the burnt edges and the watercolor and then that craft
cardstock, speckledy cardstock. And then there's our back spine there. And then we're stuck there. <laughs> I am going to put some paper cardstock back behind this. And I'm going to put some books on either side and let that sit tight like that overnight. But before we go, let's go ahead and put on this little die cut collage that I made. I'm going to use some. All right, we're going to put it on at a slant. I'm going to put on a piece of uh, score tape there at the very bottom and then some here and then another little piece beside that. Okay, let's see. Yep, that'll work. Okay, and then take my backs off. Because the top part of this is not going to be adhered. There we go. I'm just making sure that that's going to be all on the pocket part and not up here and get attached to this. So this can still move freely. Alright, and then I'm going to attach this onto the front of our signature and that's going to be one of our first decorations so on the signature and let's get this adhered on there I love library pockets it's one of my favorite favorite vintage embellishments is library pockets. I've always loved books. I've always loved reading books, making books. Um, in the 90s it was regular old scrapbooking. I love doing that. I love to journal. I love to write. I love hand lettering. So all of this is right up my alley. And all of these books that I make, I never want to give them away. <laughs> I want to keep all of them, but I would never do that much writing, so I have to get rid of some of them that I make and let other people enjoy them. All right, so take our backs off. I'm going to hold it up a little bit here and kind of eyeball it. Get my bone folder and kind of press down there. There we go. I love that. So that's my first decoration. Yay. All right. So, like I said, I'm going to close this up and sit it here and I'm going to put some books beside it so that it can have a long rest on that spine and we can make sure it's good and secure before we start decorating more and adding pockets. Um, like I said, I'm going to add secretarial pockets to the front and back. And then on the interior here, I'm going to put some kind of pocket. It might be a two or three tiered pocket, but that'll be for next video. I think the next video will be all the pockets that I want to put in. So uh, if I want to add a pocket to this envelope or 
um, some of the pages. We'll be adding all of our pockets in the next video and probably covering up our boo-boos on our spine here, doing a little bit of decorating to get rid of our boo-boos there. And then the next video after that, I think we'll be uh, decorating all the pages and doing the finishing touches and a um, full flip through. So that is our video today of our coffee dyed speckled journal. That's what the name of this series is for this journal is a coffee dyed speckled journal. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe, hit that button, and give me a thumbs up. And thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. You don't know how much that helps me with my um, YouTube ratings and um, stand with YouTube. I appreciate you so much for doing that. Y'all have a great day. God bless. Bye, y'all.